Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to build Line Linux. So we are going to look at what Linux is and everything that has to do with Linux. So let's continue here. We also might want to uh, make our system a bit faster by setting a make flag so we can export make flags and here we can say dash j so how many processes do we want to run so if i have a core to duo it can uh, support two separate processes and i believe that i set up this machine let's see here how many processes did I give this system? It has four. So let's say that we give it three. Uh, so it uh, will go a little bit faster to uh, build things. You can also provide this variable when you run make and build things in your system as well. You can also do da uh, dash J, but then you will have something like this. Uh, so you will not have the space in between there. It's only when you set this uh, make flag. So now we will create a tool chain and a temporary system. That's uh, chapter five. So everything is set up and we want to create our first system. And we, a lot of things that we build, we will use um, a specific tool chain that you first configure your build then you make things and then you install what you have made. So let's go in here. We will see how the first thing that we want to build is bin utils. And bin utils is a package that contains a linker, an assembler, and other tools that are handling object files. So what is a linker, an assembler, and what is object files? When you build a system, you will make things and put them into object files. So it will create a binary representation of that source code that somebody wrote. But when you have actually created these binaries and these can be used at libraries as well, you want to create something, when you have created these object files, you want to have something that can put them together into something that the system can run. And that's a linker that will put things together and actually assemble them together to binaries so you can actually use them. So bin utils has all these features that you need to build things in your system. So it's very, <laughs> very, um, very simple to just say that we, we want to build something that we can use to build something with. So this is the first thing you do. You will create a build tool. So uh, in order to do that, we will create a build directory. Then we will go to um, the LFS sources directory. Let's see what kind of permissions did we have on the source directory. We had LFS is the owner of the source directory. So we can do this in a couple of different ways. But things will be put into the actual the actual tools directory when it's done. So we will start here to create something that is uh, called work. So we'll start in the work directory here. And then the general uh, instructions here is that we need to extract the file that we want to build into this directory. And there is actually a command called tar um, that will extract things. I'm not really sure what tar stands for. This is tar archiving utility doesn't really have a specific name. 
it seems. Um, <laughs> it just extracts files from a specific other file. Um, so here I usually use uh, a few commands here. I use x for extract. I use uh, v for verbose. And then I use f for a specific file, I guess. Uh, file, yes. And then I use uh, J or Z for the different uh, types of files to extract. So Z stands for GZIP and uh, J stands for BZIP. And these are BZIP and uh, X, um, perhaps uh, GZIP. Uh, usually. So in order to extract a package, I do tar x v z f, and then we will go to the parent directory dot dot slash. And the first thing we should start with was the bin utils. And it has an extension here, you see tar. So tar is the actual tar ball that they call. Um, so tar is a tool that will take a directory or any files and put them into one file. It does not do any compression or anything. It just bundles files together. Then on that file, you see that we have an other extension here, xz, that says that this is packaged and uh, compressed. So XZ is the compression. And you can have GZ, that's GZIPPED. You can have BZIP2, that's BZIPPED. It's an, another encryption um, tool that makes it even more compressed. But we use this to extract these files. And these were not GZIPPED. So let's try with J for BZIPPED. They are not bzipped either. So what is this um, xz then? Let's see. What other functions do we have? Um, we have um, large j for xz. Okay. I learned something today as well. So large j will do the xz files. Now you see a lot of file names going through on the screen. And that's because I told it verbose. And verbose, I only do that so I know when it's done. And I see that something is actually happen happening. And now you see that it created a directory here called binutils with all the files in it. So if I go into binutils, I have all the files that I need to build bin binutils. And if we go back to the um, little guide here, they tell us to in the bin utils directory, create a build directory where it should build this specific, <laughs> specific tool. Then we go into this build directory. This is not how I usually do it. We will configure this. So from the root directory, we run the command configure and configure is something that you usually do. And this, if it's available, um, will go through your system, figure out what libraries are available, what kind of system tools can I use, and so on. Is there a compiler? And everything that it will package up and create a configuration file for the make utility to find where the different tools are located. So if you have, for instance, GCC, which is, is the GNU, GNU a compiler, um, it actually knows that this compiler is located in this directory. So look for it there when you build. So that's what configure does. We will set a prefix for this configure, and that's where to build the tool to. So where what directory do we want bin utils to be sent to when it's built? We will do it with the sysroot. Uh, 
with this root of uh, LFS whoop, of LFS so that's the system root uh, we will do it with uh, lib uh, path of uh, tools dash lib so we say that the system root is LFS so that's our root that we want to build things into we say that the tool slash lib directory that's where you will put all your libraries when you build bin utils we will have a target and that's the uh, system target that we want to build to and this is what we set up before LFS uh, target so this is the architecture we want to build for we want to disable uh, NLS and I think that is some uh, see here what the guide says disables internationalization uh, for this because we it, because it's temporary we don't need to have all the different um, arrow messages and so on built for all languages on the universe or in the universe and we also want to disable uh, the error and that says it prevents the build from stopping in the event there were any warnings from the host compiler so that's what we want to do when we are configuring this uh, so I wonder okay is it not executable it should be executable um, usually when you run configure you will have some output ah I had some uh, hash mark before the actual uh, command so that's why it was ignored so that was no good so just dash dash no hash <laughs> or dot dot no hash so when you run this you see that it checks a lot of things here it will look for cc or gcc and it will look in the system for a lot of different does it have expect no does it have r as and and so on so everything will be looked for and then we will create some status file here and it will create a make file so if you see here it have created a config log a config status some temp file i guess and the make file and the make file is the important part because this make file tells the system how to make your bin tools in this case so that's a very interesting script make is a very interesting and kind of hard language to understand so if we look a little bit at this make file you see that you have a lot of different targets and so on but th this all describes how you should build this uh, and we will not go into how make files are structured or how to write your own make files if you want to know that then i will need to make it totally different file a uh, different video about that because that's uh, a very hard subject in itself then when we have created this make uh, file we can actually run make and this will go through and actually build bin utils and this will take some time depending on your system depending on how many cpus you have and how much power you have in your system it may take different amount of time so I will cut until I uh, till after we have built it. So there we have built it. And now if we look into uh, tools here, uh, we don't have a library directory yet, but we need to have a library directory. And if we also have a system that is x86-64 and if you look into this target so if we look at the LFS TGT again 
we see that we are running on x86-64, so it's a 64 uh, system. Then after we have created our library, uh, because now we have built this uh, binaries and everything into this directory, but now we want to install it in our system, and that makes uh, requires actually to have a lib, a lib directory. So we will create that. But we also actually need to have a lib64 directory because we have a 64-bit system. If, so I will make a symlink to that directory. So from uh, we can go into tools. And then we will do a symlink from lib to tools slash lib64. So now we have a lib directory. And if I go into the lib directory and I do touch on a file, if you do touch, you will create a file that doesn't have any data in it. So it's a zero data. And if I go into the lib64 here and do an ls in that directory, you see the same file here. So these, this is the same directory. And rm is remove, and uh, r is recursive, and then we have f again. And what does that say? Force, yeah, remove forcefully. <laughs> So if it has any, if it tells you, are you really sure to do that? Uh, it will not ask you, it, you will just remove it. So that's why I run rm-rf to remove things. So let's go back to our uh, LFS uh, directory here. We'll go into the sources directory and we will go into our work directory again and our build directory in that work directory. No, our bin utils and the build directory. So now we are back where we were before. And in this build directory, we know, now want to run something called make install. So we did make, it built the package into this build directory. So here is the tools that were built. It has a bin utils that is executable. Uh, we have an gas, we have an etc for configuration. You can look in etc. So there are configuration files in that and so on. But if we want to install that in our system, and as we set prefix to tools, it will install it into tools. So we will run make install. That will go through and put all the made things into tools. So if we look at tools here, we now have a lot more data in our system here. We have a bin directory, we have a share directory, and we have some libraries in that directory as well. So now we have built bin utils for the first time, because we need to build it multiple times, because we don't have the compiler built that we want to use to build bin utils, because we have just built bin utils so far. I think I will break this video here. So this video will be a series with lots of different videos. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned a little bit more about Linux. And uh, I hope that you like this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.